Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday and happy week six of online learning. Now, I'm going to start us off with some highlights and updates before we get started into our lesson here. Okay, so first things first, we are in our last month of third grade. I'm not sure if you realize that. It's a bit sad for me, I have to admit, but more exciting for you because you are one step closer to fourth grade, and that is very exciting, something to celebrate, considering that we've been working towards that goal all school year. Um, second thing is, I hope you enjoyed this week's options of STEM activities, of course. Um, I love seeing your responses to my comments on your assignment on Enmodo. Keep that up with your creativity. Continue to build your creativity. Continue to have fun. I love to see it, especially in your videos that you send. Um, the third thing is remember to keep up with the Magic Math lessons. You need three past lessons each week, of course, nothing new. The fourth thing is remember to be practicing multiplication division facts, okay? So if you do not have your own resources at home, such as flashcards, you can use the resources on my teacher page on your Clever account, okay? Now, something I want you to make note of is pretty soon towards I believe the middle of the summer, the end of the summer, your Clever account will no longer be attached to my teacher page. So you might wanna start saving those resources that you enjoyed using, such as maybe Coloring Squared, the website where you can uh, make the coloring sheets and you can color in for the multiplication divi and division, or if you wanna save the Quizlet, or if you wanna save Mr. Nussbaum or, or Math Playground, save the resources that you actually enjoy on your computer, okay? Because eventually you won't be attached to see those anymore on my teacher page on your Clever account. The fifth thing is incentive question. It is on the class period math page on Edmodo, of course. I want you to round 980 to the nearest 10. Simple. Um, and then I want you to send me your answer and a message on Edmodo. Now, I know it's easier to make a post, but it can sometimes your post can be in the way of others looking for my post with the math work or the schedule or something like that. So just send me an answer on Edmodo and a message on Edmodo. And then the other thing is you don't want other people to see, other people to see your answer, okay? Um, the sixth thing is, this week we are working on mental math, multiples of 10, 100, and 1,000. So this video will focus on the lesson only. I will post the video to the answers to your independent work for today at 1140. So today you're going to have two videos, of course. This is the lesson. You're going to come back much later for the answers to your independent work, okay? Of course, you have to complete your independent work to check your work, okay? Um, I'm going to go ahead and get us started with the PowerPoint that I have for you on multiples of 10, 100, and 1,000. All right, so taking a look, we have multi multiplying by multiples of 10, 100, and 1,000, of course. Now, um, I didn't put 1,000 in the title, of course, but we know exactly how to solve for it. It's the same exact thing as multiplying by multiples of 10 and 100, which we're going to get into right now. So some multiplication words that I wanted us to review, we have that multiple, which is the product of a given whole number and any other number. We have factors, which are numbers you multiply together to obtain a product. And then we know a product is the answer to a multiplication problem. Now, an example here, we have five times six equals 30. Five and six are our factors. 30 would be our product, okay? Moving along to multiplication patterns here, okay? So we're going to solve the simpler problem when we multiply by 10, multiply by multiples of 10, 100, and 1,000. So in this case, our example is three times 20. We would solve three times two first, and we would get six, of course, and then we would add the zero that we see in our multiplication problem. And that's only one zero, so it's one zero in your answer, in your product. So the answer would be 60. Same thing here, and three times 200, you multiply three times two, which you get six, and then you add the zeros that you see in your, in your problem. So we have two zeros, and then you have 600 as your answer, as your product, all right? Now remember, however many zeros are, are in the problem or how many should be in your answer, okay? And then you have to figure out what is the pattern as you're thinking about it and, and completing the problems. All right, our multiplication patterns here. So once again, going through that same thing that we just did, I'm gonna go back to that other slide. Okay, so solve the simpler problem, and then however many zeros are in the problem or how many should be in your answer. And then you're thinking about, logically, what's the pattern? So here we have 40 times 6 equals 240. How do they solve that? 4 times 6 is 24. Add that one zero, you get 240. 400 times 6, you do 4 times 6 first, and you get 24. Then you're going to add the zeros that you see. Now that you see that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 digits, you're going to add the comma that is needed in the necessary place it's, that it's supposed to be. Okay, next problem, you have 4,000 times six. You're gonna do the exact same thing and not forgetting your comma. Multiply four times six, get 24. Add those three zeros and then bring your comma into the correct place. Now, continue with that multiplication pattern. 
however many zeros in the problem is how many should be in your answer, except when a zero is used in a simpler problem, okay? So here we have six times five equals 30. We knew that automatically. Now we have six times 50, okay? Six times five equals 30. Then we add that one zero that we see, so we have 300. Now our third problem, six times five, we know equals 30. Then we add the two zeros, and we, if we have four digits, that means we're going to add the comma in the necessary place, making it 3,000, okay? All right, continuing with multiplication patterns. So seven times 40, we know equals 28. If I add one zero, you know that would be 280, okay? If I have seven times 400, if you multiply seven times four, you get 28. And then you add the two zeros, which makes it 2,800, not forgetting your comma, okay? Now, if I have three times one, I know that equals three. And then if I have three times 10, I know that equals 30. Now, if I have three times 100, I know that equals 300. If I have five times eight, I know that equals 40, okay? There's already one zero in that answer. And if I have five times 80, I know that equals 400 because five times eight equals 40. And then you add that zero at the very end, making it 400. The last problem, five times eight equals, um, five times eight equals 40. And then you have the two zeros. You're gonna add, that, add those two zeros at the very end. You already have one zero, so you have 4,000, okay? All right, and there we have our visual for you. I meant to type that as I was talking, but I forgot, so I went ahead and typed it right away. Okay, um, now we're gonna try some on our own, and um, I'm going to share my paper with you on my um, webcam here, not webcam, on my Elmo here, if you just give me just a moment. So if you have paper available, or you can just follow along, whichever you would like to do, I'm gonna do these problems on a piece of paper here and share my camera, okay? Right, now before I begin, I need to remember what I discussed in the PowerPoint. So remember, you need to remember what I discussed in the PowerPoint. So multiplication patterns, you need to remember how many, however many zeros are in the problem is how many should be in the answer. We know this, I taught you to cover up that zero and then multiply the two numbers that you have and then add the zeros that you see at the very end, except when a zero is used in your simpler problem, okay? So let's take a look at the first one that I have. I have some examples here. So eight times 40, first thing I would do is eight times four, I know that equals 32, and then I'm gonna add that one zero that I see in my answer, in my product. 320 would be my answer. A second example, nine times 200. Okay, first things first, what's two times nine? We know two times nine equals 18, okay? Now I need to add the two zeros that I see at the very end of my answer, all right? Now it's 1,800. How do I represent that? I need to remember my comma. So it's 1,800, just like that, okay? Next problem, four times three. We know four times three equals 12. I need to add the zeros that I see. I have two zeros. Add those zeros in my product and my, my answer to my multiplication problem. And I need to remember my comma because it's 1,200, okay? Number four, we have seven times 700. I need to multiply seven times seven. That equals 49. I have two zeros. I put my two zeros in my product. And then I need to remember my comma because that four digits, 4,900 is my answer, okay? Number five, we have six times 30. Six times three equals 18. I bring my one zero into my answer and my answer is 180, okay? Now you're gonna go and do your independent work for today and then you'll come back at 1140 for the answers to the independent work that you did, okay? Now I'm sure you're ready to say. No, she's my gym, Ben. <laughs> it said that was easy, okay? It is actually the. I changed it to, I'm not really actually really sure which language that was. I'll let you know much later, but I'm sure you can say that was easy, all right? Go ahead and start your independent work for today and then come back later for the answers to it.